welcome back. If you just join us, we have Ray Johnson, Jose Molina, Charlie Callis tonight. And this gal was here a few weeks ago. She's just delightful. She has millions and millions of fans. And uh, this album, where's the album? Somebody stole the album. Well, that's how I... Hold up the Kleenex box. What? Just gives you a feeling like you had an album. It's a lot thinner than this. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the album is called The New Harvest First Gathering. And it's released today, which is possibly maybe the reason we don't have it. And she'll be appearing on February the 27th with Mac Davis at the Anaheim Convention Center as part of their uh, three-week tour that they're starting together. Would you welcome Dolly Parton? Dolly? Thank you. This is one of the songs out of the new album. It's one I've written. I hope you'll like. It's been a long, dark night And I've been waiting for the morning It's been a long hard fight But I see a brand new day dawning I've been looking for the sunshine You know I ain't seen it in so Everything's gonna work out just fine And everything's gonna be all right That's been all wrong Cause I can see Do you, do you get people singing that to you all the time? Hello, darling. Da, 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 da. Oh, a time or two. How you been? <laughs> I've been fine. I'm so excited to be back so soon. Well, you look like a Christmas tree ornament tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you. You have these made. I think we talked about that. Uh -huh. You said that you have, have a, a gal who makes these? It does, my. 
things. And, uh, of course, I just wanted to tell you that I'm really happy that uh, I got a chance to come back so soon. Oh, and I know that a lot of people are watching because I had so many uh, people. Did you have good comments by the time you were here? Yeah, I really did. In fact, uh, I think everybody in the world must have seen the show. Except your husband. No, he didn't see it, I'll have to admit. <laughs> now, I don't know whether you saw the show last uh, time, and you've said this publicly before, that your husband feels awkward about watching it, or he gets... Uh, well, it makes him kind of nervous. I don't really know why nervous. he doesn't watch, but he just never does watch me perform. He's never seen me perform. We've been married for 10 years. And That's of course weird. He's, yeah, <laughs> no. That really is. But anyway, he wouldn't be watching tonight, and as for the folks that didn't see it the last time, Johnny is his favorite. And I had to tell him all the jokes. Yeah, Johnny's my he went favorite. <laughs> It uh, won't take you too much time tonight to tell him all the jokes. So, uh, I'm not going to talk sum them up very quickly tonight. Uh, <laughs> oh, I thought it was good. Yeah. But anyway, my mama was the one though that uh, really gave me a fit. She, uh, you what know, you mean? well, you know how he was kidding about it. My mama is the best person in the world, and she's just typical mama. And, oh, you know, but I know what you're talking about. I asked people. about you had a big family, twelve <laughs> kids. And you said... I made some smart remark. Oh, I was just kidding. Oh, she wasn't that mad. She just... Uh, I said something about she could get pregnant having Daddy uh, explain the advantages of the pill to her or something. Something like that. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, she said... I so said... I called up and I said, Mama, uh, they told me that uh, the people on The Tonight Show liked me real good and, and they asked me to come back and I was real excited. I thought that was a real big deal, you know. She said, well, now that's real nice. You go back up there and you have a good time and you be cute and you be funny, but I'd appreciate it if you'd just leave me and your daddy out. <laughs> just no more, no more conversation said, about the family. You know, but I tell you what, my yeah. mom is in the hospital. She's oh, been sorry. in there several days. She's had some surgery. She's fine now, right. but I know she's watching and she's probably squirming around in the hospital bed. What's her she's name? She's going to get Abby Lee. And my dad. Oh, and if you're watching tonight, too. we hope you're you're get get well soon. Well, anyway, okay. she she loves you. And the show. Thank, you. Thank you. Good to see you. We'll do this. We'll come back. We'll talk some more and uh, whatever. Stay tuned. Oh, that's nice. Thank you, Doc. We found the album. Dolly, we found the album, okay. which is your latest album. Mm -hmm. uh, the record has disappeared. Well, they just didn't send the jacket over, did they? Yeah, I guess yes. they did because the album won't be out until, I think, the 27th. Officially, huh? Yeah, so that was just something I wanted to bring. A lot of these are your own the songs, did you think? Uh-huh. All of them but two are, mm -hmm. are songs that I've written. Of course, I do most of my own writing. That's great to, to be able to... They have the talent to write and sing, and you, you arranged them and Well, I worked uh, on this. This is the first time that I've ever had, uh, you know, the freedom to really right. get all of um, my musical ideas down, even though I have to admit I have <coughs> lots and lots of help on this. I have great people in my group, right. uh, you know, that had creative ideas, and it's co-produced by Greg Perry, who is uh, the head of, of our group, mm -hmm. and Rod Smarr had terrific ideas, and Charlie Chapelier and mm -hmm. Clyde Brooks, and all kinds of people on there. So I can't take full credit, but I, I'm proud of the album. I yeah. think it turned out real nice. Good. Without mentioning your mom or dad again, since we can't talk about them. <laughs> you, you well, mentioned, we can't talk you mentioned about you, you grew up in the Tennessee mountains. Yeah, I did, in the Smoky Mountains. And yeah. uh, like I mentioned, from a large family, just, just farm folks. My daddy didn't tell me not to talk about him, so I can talk about him. Was he a farmer? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? We made our living uh, farming. Every time you think of the hills of Tennessee, you always, I always remember, I guess it was Sergeant York, I remember in the movie, kept saying, I just want a good piece of bottomland. Well, that's like about the truth. Remember? <laughs> between, just want a good piece of bottomland. Yeah. And after the war, he got it, but it was between like two ridges. Yeah, we well, that's almost. supposed to be the most productive mm -hmm. land. Well, that is the most fertile, of course, in the country. Uh, you raise crops all over the side of the mountains, and uh, there's an old uh, joke about all country people, farmers having one leg shorter than the other. That's from trying to hold the fields and stay up on the side of the mountain. Ooh. They actually <laughs> so, cultivate the side. Yeah, well, you do, yeah. Mostly you raise corn and... Uh, yeah. Do they have mountain, what you call mountain humor jokes? Like, like oh, yeah, they have it? lots of jokes. I guess one of my favorites, this might not be too, uh, too nice, but I'm gonna tell it anyway. I think no. it's fun. <laughs> This is uh, a show to do it, if there's well, any yeah. such show to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you I'll have a dubious show Mama's anyway. Watching, I tell you. Uh, but anyway, th there's this one story. It's supposed to be the truth. I don't know if it is or not. I doubt it. But anyway, this kid uh, swallowed a bullet. And the mother got real, real upset. And so she rushed it to the doctor. And she told the doctor that the kid had swallowed the bullet. And he said, well, now, don't you worry about it. You take it home, and you give it a good dose of castor oil, 
which is a real strong laxative. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so, I know about Give that. it a good dose of castor oil and just watch it real close and don't point it at anybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's... That's okay. We, have, we haven't had a good bullet joke on this show <laughs> you in a long had time. That one before, Bull, no, bullets are cleared on this show. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. You, you know, we had Alex Haley on the show uh, a couple of weeks ago and we talking about genealogy and where people came from. Um, did you ever check out your, your family background past your, say, grandmothers, grandfathers, or? Well, they all lived on the same mountain. We never got any farther than that. Yeah. <laughs> you mean you mean trace our yeah, history? Yeah, further back, back to than whatever. that. Yeah, where you originally came um, from, or? Well, I really don't uh, know where I came yeah. from except in the mountains. Just in the mountains. <laughs> yeah. how, how, how close were your closest neighbors? Oh, our closest neighbors at one time where we lived was, I guess, two miles away. In fact, this sounds like a story made up. It sounds like something in the old days. But at one time where we lived, we didn't have close neighbors, and there was this church that used to be up on the top of the mountain. And any time that a person, you know, you knew the neighbors and the people that lived in and around there, and you, right. uh, if somebody was sick, you kind of would pick that up maybe at church or something. And if somebody died, somebody would ring the church bell ever how many years old they were that many times, and you kind of know that, you know, what had happened. Knowing the neighbors well, yeah, like you and know if who you, it was. Huh? If you needed help, you would ring the bell uh, three times. And then everybody, you know, all the farmers and mountain people would uh, would gather up the church to see what was going on. You know, like somebody's house was burning down, right. and that sort of thing. And if a baby was born, they would ring it once. So everybody pretty much knew, you know, all the people. But that was just in case somebody needed something, all the people would gather there. I thought that was a pretty neat idea. So you had to be communicated mm -hmm. by the church bell. Yeah. That's what I should get for the uh, for the monologue. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Three bells help help comes and uh, somebody died. <laughs> were you uh, speaking? Of, were you born at home or were you born in the hospital? I was born at home. In fact, uh, there's 12 of us kids and six of us were born at home. And the doctor that delivered us, of course, a lot of times they didn't even have a doctor. Yeah, a midwife. Yeah, or, right. Yeah. And and neighbors, you know, everybody knew what to do. You learn to survive the best way you can. But when I was born, the doctor did come to our house. Uh, my doctor is still alive. He's a wonderful man. His name is uh, Dr. Robert F. Thomas. And uh, when he came to our house, we didn't have money to pay him. And, of course, few people ever did. But he worked for the Methodist Association, even though right. we were not Methodists. But uh, we were happy that we had some Methodists <laughs> because of the doctor. But when I was born, uh, <laughs> not just because of that, but he was paid with a sack of cornmeal. Of course, we used to grow our own corn, and Daddy, we used to shell it, and Daddy used to take it to the mill. And, of course, uh, that's that's what I cost, a sack of meal. <laughs> so you came in for a sack of meal. That's huh? right. <laughs> yeah, I guess in, in rural areas they did it very often. They bartered with uh, mm -hmm. the stores for goods and so forth instead well, of money. sure, because the people, I mean, even the doctor, he was not wealthy by any means, and I'm sure they made good use of the meal. It's just too bad it couldn't have been flour. It had more dough. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Come on, folks. Did you... Uh, I would guess you probably met your husband f from the area. No, no. Really? Uh, well, he's from Tennessee, but I met my husband the first day that I moved to Nashville in 1964. As uh -huh. a matter of fact. First day away from home? And... Uh-huh. Well, I just just took up with a strange man, that's all. Huh? <laughs> my daddy didn't want me to leave home for that very reason. He knew I'd do that. Really? No, oh. I'm only kidding. But anyway, I did. It's, it's the truth that I that I met my husband the first day. I took dirty clothes from home because I was in such a hurry to go. So I had gone to the laundromat, which was the first time that I had ever been to a laundromat. And I, I put my clothes in the wash machine and I got a cold drink and I was just walking along the sidewalks, just kind of looking around Nashville. So this good looking guy went by in a Chevrolet and me being straight from the country, you speak to everybody. And if you don't, you're stuck up. You know, you're just, uh, you're just an old stick in the mud if you don't speak. So he said, you're going to, uh, hello there, you're going to get sunburned. I said, oh, I don't think so. How you doing? <laughs> so anyway, so he made a circle and came back around. I thought, uh-oh, I've yes. done it this time. <laughs> so. <laughs> What'd you do? Say, come on in and see my spin cycle? Well, I. <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, but I wish I'd have thought of that. I'm not that clever. Oh, well, I... <laughs> but I tell you what, though, he did. We did start talking, and he did go back in the laundromat with me, and I was uh, hoping he wouldn't see me getting my clothes out of, uh, you know, the the dryer and all. But 
Anyway, we met at the wishy-washy, and in all honesty, it's been wishy-washy ever since. The wishy-washy? That's yeah. what <laughs> You meet, a nice, you meet nice people at the laundromat. And two years later, we married. You know, it's not a bad place to meet fellows because if you see a guy going there, the laundromat with clothes. Yeah, you it's know. It's not he's a bad assumption uh, that he's he'll unmarried. He'll do the washing for you. Yeah, or he might uh, <laughs> not married, or his wife doesn't like to wash. One of the two. So, <laughs> so how long have you been married now? For ten years. That's good, and it's happy and everything. Oh, it's great. Super. It's like we talked before. He never goes to the shows. He never. Uh, um, he's just really a great person. And now, he, he, he really stays behind the scenes. Am I talking too long? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I want to tell you a funny thing that he did. Okay. Well, there's a couple of funny things, but I'll tell you one oh, for cool. sure. <laughs> there's the, the tour bus that go, you know, in Nashville yeah. that goes around to all the stars' homes. And uh, we live way out in the country. I guess I never thought I was that much of a star, but they do come there anyway. Sure, you are. So, uh, anyway, they, he, he works out in the yard all the time. You know, he works with the tractor and does a lot of grade work and construction. And so he just loves to be outside. So people come up and, you know, he just looks like a gardener or just somebody working there. And he, that's what he wants them to think. So they start to take pictures. He said, no, 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 don't, uh, you, you got the wrong one. I just work here. And uh, so then they start asking him questions about you know, about me and about my family. He said, what's she like? What's she like? He said, oh, she's really nice. You know, I, I just love her. But her husband, I don't know about him. You know, he's kind of weird. <laughs> so anyway, they just always, you know, putting them on like that. And, and once they tore down the, uh, uh, the fence, you know, back, back in the bus out, they have to turn around in their driveway. Yeah. And they said, well, just don't mention, don't mention that it was a tour bus when they come home. He said, I won't, I won't mention it because I wouldn't dare mention it to him. But now, y'all be careful, you hear? <laughs> He's so, having more fun yeah. putting them on. I know. That's what he does. He won't let them take pictures just in case, you know. Yeah. So now I've done spill the whole thing. Yeah. So next time they'll all be taking pictures. You're copping out in your whole yeah. family, your mother, your father, your husband. You going to do another number for us? Oh, like this, yeah, like I will. Something? Let me get my guitar right. here. Gotcha. You call it guitar or guitar? Guitar. Guitar. Get to show Accent on a guitar. I tell you what, this is a song that, now I write a lot of songs about my growing up days and about my mama, and uh, most of them are really good because I have a great mom and daddy. Now this is the song. Mama loves me to sing the good ones about her. Sure. But this is one she hates, so, so she <laughs> <laughs> So mother, now, you're gonna get yours. I wanna, yeah, right. I'm gonna sing this so she'll get better faster because okay. she'll get her spunk back. She's gonna be mad at this. This is called Traveling Man. And uh, if I can remember it, I've never just played it with me and the guitar, not in a while. The man I loved had a selling route, selling goods from house to house. Now I knew my mama would never stand for me stepping out with a traveling man. And my mama bought things that he was a selling, but mama didn't know, and I sure wouldn't tell him. That behind her back I was making plans to meet somewhere with that traveling man. That traveling man was a good bit older But a girl needs arms to hold her Mama didn't know cause I didn't told her Cause she wouldn't understand Me stepping out with a traveling man and My mama didn't allow me a going courting And I'd tell lies, I reckon I oughtn't <laughs> Oh, but she'd have given me the back of her hand If she'd have seen me with that traveling man So I'd tell my mama that I reckon I ought to Run to the spring and fetch her some water but what Mama didn't know is I had a plan to meet down there with that traveling man. Now I made plans to run away with that traveling man on a Saturday. Well, Saturday's here and here I stand. And there goes Mama with my traveling man. <laughs> took my love and he took my mother. I didn't know because Mama didn't tell me and I don't understand. Mama running off with my traveling man and I am really going to miss that traveling man. Mother will be on her feet tomorrow. Yes. She's on her feet Thanks now, I guarantee you. We'll take a short pause. We'll be right back. Charlie Callis is with us tonight. Also, we have Jose Molina and Ray Johnson. <laughs>